Thursday, November 18th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So, are gold and silver about to uh, reinstate themselves as the ultimate uh, risk-free assets, the ultimate safe havens? I, I think it's very possible. Am I trying to predict where the, the price of gold and silver are going? No, I'm just talking about purely a, as risk assets. And um, why would they do that though? Well, because the current uh, risk-free asset that has been, um, yes, <laughs> a risk-free asset for, for many decades, uh, it's... Uh, quality of a risk-free asset is under question, e even from those people who run the system, from uh, central bankers at the Federal Reserve. So before I start, i like to say I, I did make a video uh, about the situation in the Treasury market. And why is the Treasury market and the bond market so important? Some people might think the stock market is the most important uh, market out there. Well, but it isn't. Uh, the, the treasury market uh, is, and, and the bond markets, are the biggest market out there, bigger than, they dwarf the, um, the stock market. It, it's where the price of credit or money is set. And uh, the U.S. treasury market, as the U.S. dollar, is still, for now, uh, the reserve asset, the, uh, the major reserve asset in the world or the reserve currency. A and some of you might say, well, but the dollar is so strong. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, it, it's strong against other fiat currencies. And this is what we need to understand. But against hard assets, commodities, it's starting to, to lose a lot of value, of course. And inflation is a reflection of that as well. When you have the currency uh, devaluing by 6% almost, well, more than 6% annualized uh, versus real things, versus the cost of living, that's not a good thing. That, that, that's a, a vote of no confidence uh, on the dollar. And the same thing is happening, of course, here in the UK. We had very high CPI and RPI yesterday. So yeah, uh, I did a video uh, about eight days ago. It was entitled Treasury Market Liquidity Pointing to Trouble for Global Financial System. Um, and I referenced an article from the FT where people uh, in the markets, in the Treasury markets, professionals, people who deal in it, uh, every day. We're talking about the fact that liquidity is shrinking, the bid to offer spread is widening, uh, and, and this is of course a sign that people uh, either or both, uh, they, they, they don't want to deal with another counterparty because they think they're risky, and they are concerned that uh, the security itself is going to move very wildly, <laughs> that there's not much depth in the market, and there should be because uh, what uh, treasuries do, they're the risk-free rate of return. Uh, they determine what the other assets uh, rates of return are going to be. So ever since the central banks have been running this policy of very low rates. They've driven yields down and yields have gone to negative in some countries, near to zero in others, very low in the US. That's corresponded, <laughs> corresponded in an inverse move higher in risky assets because people have to chase uh, yields. So they go from the uh, less risky assets like treasuries into corporate bonds, stocks, private equity, everything. And uh, of course, the central banks have driven this. It's their own fault because they've been gobbling up these risk-free assets. 
like there's no tomorrow. And they're doing that, this, of course, to help governments, uh, uh, governments keep uh, inflating the system. Because as I've said many times, in a fiat currency system, if the government doesn't borrow, uh, create that out there, uh, the money supply will shrink. So now, <laughs> uh, of course, the Fed is not admitting, uh, nor other central banks, that it's their fault. They basically captured these risk-free markets. And now there's trouble. And yesterday, uh, uh, there were two Fed presidents, uh, the New York Fed president, uh, John Williams, and also the F Cleveland Fed president, Loretta Mester, talking about the fact that uh, there's trouble in the broken, they, they call a broken treasury market here from Zero Hedge. Of course, uh, they don't come out and say what I've said, but that's what's going on. And uh, the reason why this is important is that I've spoken about John Exter many times, uh, a, a guy who uh, wrote in 1972 after Nixon closed the gold window that uh, all currencies from then on became IOU nothings. Yes, they were able to broker the petrodollar deal, but that, that petrodollar deal is uh, getting diluted more and more, I would say, especially with the Russians getting involved uh, in August of this year with the Saudis. But uh, apart from the IOU nothings, he, he spoke about the inverted pyramid of liquidity. That's the key word, liquidity. And, and we see that liquidity in treasuries uh, is getting very thin. And uh, according to him, wh when the system collapses, because he knew this system was very fragile. Yes, it's gone on for 50 years almost since he wrote I owe you nothings. So this inverted pyramid that we have here has been adapted. They've uh, put the uh, derivatives and unfunded government liabilities on top. Back when uh, John Exter wrote about the inverted pyramid, derivatives weren't as important as they are. So that's the riskiest um, asset class, derivatives. Derivatives, of course, are highly leveraged bets on all the other securities down below, below in this pyramid. It's, it's a casino. Unfunded go government liabilities, of course, are mushrooming. And then you have the non-monetary commodities, private business, real estate. Um, does this mean that uh, commodities are gonna go uh, collapse? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Um, <laughs> It, 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 it's not clear cut anyway. And then you get the corporate bonds, muni bonds, securitized, securitized debt, listed stocks. That's the stock market. And then towards the bottom of, of the pyramid, you get the government bonds and, and treasury bills. Uh, government bonds are basically treasuries of more than a year and the bills are <laughs> treasuries of less than a year in maturity. They're called bills. From two to uh, 10 year, they're called notes. And anything above 10 years is called a bond. And then you have paper, money, or currency that you hold in your pocket, the Federal Reserve note or the Bank of England note. And at the bottom, <laughs> you've got gold. And I would add silver to that as well. And that's why I asked in the beginning of this video, are gold and silver about to re-emerge as the risk-free assets, or even if you want to call it another way, as true safe havens? I think they are. Is it going to happen tomorrow or next week? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I think we're moving towards that. But uh, it's worrying when you have uh, people like Fed presidents warning about that, and you have people who work in the markets uh, warning about that. Like uh, like I referenced in my video from about eight days ago, I recommend you watch that. It's called Treasury Market Liquidity Pointing to Trouble for Global Financial System, if you haven't. So with that, 
Let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.20 a.m. London time. Uh, gold is uh, basically unchanged, 1867.50. Uh, uh, the range has been 71 to 62.50, so a fairly narrow range. Uh, gold has managed to rebound fairly well since uh, the drop it had on Tuesday. <laughs> that was the day it made a, a new high. I think you, we went up to like 1878 almost. And then it just flipped around uh, on the back of... Uh, stronger retail sales data, but it's come right back up. Silver is up three cents at 25.10. Range has been 24.89 to 25.17. It just feels like uh, they don't want silver to go, go up higher, but I think the precious metals are looking pretty good, uh, medium to longer term. In the short term, they can move it around, of course. To the stock market, the Dow future is up 36 points. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 future is up 68 or half a percent. Uh, the uh, S&P 500 is up 10 points at 4,700. To the uh, foreign exchange uh, market, we got sterling up 0.1, just back above 135. We've got the euro up about 0.2 of a percent at 113.36. The dollar is unchanged versus the yen at 114.08. Uh, the dollar is up slightly versus the yuan at 637.94. Aussie dollar is up a quarter of a percent, 72.86. And the dollar uh, is unchanged versus the Canadian dollar, 126.09. The, the Kiwi dollar is up almost two thirds of a percent uh, at 70.40. Uh, to the uh, commodities, uh, crude, yes, crude is uh, taking a hit here, correcting down. Uh, I think the trend is uh, still higher, but uh, as I've said, markets don't go up in a straight line. If you look at this monthly chart here, uh, the trend still seems to be higher. We've broken out of a, a key formation here. Anyway, uh, we are at uh, 7657 WTI, down just over 1%. I think the uh, administration in the US is trying to uh, push OPEC into uh, increasing supply, <laughs> I guess. Uh, they, they want to... Uh, see oil lower for Christmas, uh, I guess uh, they need all they can get <laughs> uh, up there in DC in terms of increasing or regaining some of their popularity. Anyway, high-grade copper is down three quarters of a percent at 425.50. Uh, natural gas is up two percent, uh, trading around five dollars I noticed that uh, coffee, for example, yesterday made, uh, let's see how many years that is, almost a 10-year high. So uh, the, the soft commodity is still looking very bullish, as you can see here, coffee. Um, the other worrying thing is wheat. That's made, let's have a look here, a, a nine-year high as well, almost 10-year high. So, yes, energy market seems to be correcting down a little bit. Could help cost of living. But uh, now a very important uh, sector of the commodity market, i.e. the soft agricultural commodities, are moving a lot higher. And that's a worry. Um, I saw, of course, a week or two ago about uh, the story about fertilizer fertilizer prices moving up quite a lot in the U.S. That's a worry for next year, for crop yields next year. So uh, let's just finish off and look at the 10-year yield. Um, the 10-year yield right now is at 158. That's down just over two basis points. I think we got up to uh, almost uh, like 165 yesterday. 
Uh, so there is a little bit of volatility here, but it seems, as I said, underneath the surface, we need to uh, be concerned that uh, uh, the treasury market could be uh, in trouble. And, and that's very serious because it sets the tone for every market out there. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you do, make sure you hit that little notification bell to be notified of all my new videos. I make one every day. And you can also follow me on other platforms like Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. So uh, I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.